You're watching Tag TV. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 19th of August. India's flood affected Odisha on alert as depression forms over Bay of Bengal. Sri Lanka's ruling party asks President Ranil to help with ex leader Gotabaya Rajapaksa's return. And Hindus in India and Nepal celebrate birth anniversary of Lord Krishna. And now for all the details. A high alert was sounded in parts of India's flood-hit eastern Odisha state on Friday as a low-pressure area in the Bay of Bengal region intensified into a depression causing heavy rainfall in several parts of the state. Authorities were engaged in providing relief and evacuating people in affected areas, while fishermen were warned not to venture into the sea till Saturday. Authorities in India's flood-affected eastern Odisha state on Friday put the coastal districts on high alert as a low-pressure area in the Bay of Bengal region intensified into a depression, causing heavy rainfall in several parts of the state. A red alert of extremely heavy rain was issued for parts of Balasore, Bhadrak and Mayurbhanj districts while fishermen were warned not to venture into the sea till Saturday. The ongoing flood situation has already affected over 500,000 people in parts of Odisha with state government declaring 15 days of relief. The Indian Meteorological Department on Friday said the depression over Bay of Bengal was likely to cross the coast near Balasore and move towards West Bengal, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh states before weakening gradually. Several districts in central Chhattisgarh state also received heavy rainfall on Friday. A village in Chhattisgarh's Dhamtari district was flooded with water after the gates of a dam broke, an official said. Rainfall in Varanasi city of northern Uttar Pradesh state also led to a rise in water levels of River Ganga, submerging several low-lying areas. The monsoon brings heavy rain and floods to South Asia every year, but extreme weather pattern has become more frequent and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to ever more serious disasters. India-China relations are going through an extremely difficult phase because of Beijing's actions on the border. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said on Thursday, India and China have been engaged in a border standoff in Ladakh region since 2020 and two sides have failed to resolve the issue despite multiple rounds of military-level talks. India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar said on Thursday that the relationship between India and China was going through an extremely difficult phase after what Beijing had done at the border. Responding to questions after a lecture on India's vision of the Indo-Pacific at Chula Long Khan University in Thailand, Jay Shankar added the Asian century would be difficult to happen if India and China do not come together. India and China have been engaged in a border standoff since May 2020 over the transgressions by Chinese army in multiple areas of Ladakh region which also led to a violent clash in Galwan Valley. Multiple rounds of military-level talks have led to partial disengagement, but some friction points still remain. Asian century will be difficult to happen if India and China don't come together. And I think today one of the big questions is really where China and India are the Because at the moment, the relationship is going to an extremely difficult phase because of what the Chinese have done in the last few years uh, in our government. Jay Shankar co-chaired the 9th India-Thailand Joint Commission meeting this week with his Thai counterpart and Deputy Prime Minister Don Pramod Vinay, during which they discussed advancing bilateral contacts in political, economic, security and defence, connectivity and health domains. Moving on. 
over 6,000 citizens, including historians, activists, women, grassroots workers, and others, have urged the Supreme Court of India to reverse the release of 11 men convicted of rape and murder in the 2002 Bilkis Bano case. Earlier this week, 11 Hindu men jailed for life for the gang rape of pregnant Muslim women Bilkis Bano during the communal violence that swept the western state of Gujarat state in 2002 were freed on remission. She was gang raped and left to die with 14 members of her family, including her three-year-old daughter. Bano in a statement said the decision by the Gujarat state government to free her rapists has left her numb, bereft of words and shaken her faith in justice. Women organizations staged demonstrations in New Delhi on Thursday against the release of the men. Officials said the convicts' application for remission was granted because they had completed more than 14 years in jail. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's ruling party has asked President Ranil Vikramasinghe to facilitate his predecessor Gotabaya Rajapaksa's safe return to the island who fled to Southeast Asia last month after protests flared amid a crippling economic crisis. President Ranil said he is unaware of the plans of predecessor's return. The ruling party Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna has requested President Ranil Vikrame Singhe to facilitate his predecessor Gotabaya Rajpaksa's safe return to the country and provide security and other assistance. Gotabaya Rajpaksa fled to Singapore last month and quit as Sri Lanka's president after protests fled amid a crippling economic crisis, making way for veteran politician Ranil Vikramasinghe to win a vote in parliament and take the top job. Rajpaksa, who has been accused of mishandling the island nation's economy, is currently in Thailand for a temporary stay. In an interview with Reuters earlier on Thursday, Vikramasinghe said he was not aware of any such plans for the former president's return. Sri Lanka, a country of 22 million people, is facing its most severe financial crisis since independence from Britain in 1948, resulting from the combined impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and economic mismanagement. Sri Lanka will ask Japan to invite the Indian Ocean Islands' main creditor nations, including China and India, to talks on bilateral debt restructuring as it seeks a way out of its economic crisis. Someone has to call in the uh, invite the main creditor nations. We, we asked Japan to do it because Japan hosted us the last one in 2003. Meanwhile, hundreds of university students held protests blocking the main road in Colombo, creating a massive traffic jam despite a state of emergency in place. Police fired tear gas to disperse student protesters. They are demanding for the resignation of Vikramasinghe, the abolishment of the executive presidency and release of arrested pro-democracy protesters. Vikramasinghe declared a state of emergency three weeks ago but said it would be revoked next week. The protests were led by young people who have demonstrated since March this year demanding a change to the system. In news from Pakistan, Two children drowned while a search for five other people was underway on Thursday after a car was swept away by a flash flood into Mali River in Pakistan's port city of Karachi. Zishan Ansari, his wife and four children along with driver of the car were returning to Hyderabad after attending a family function in Karachi when their car swept away by flash flood into the river. The incident took place around 8 p.m. on Wednesday. On Thursday, rescue officials said bodies of a 10-year-old boy and 7-year-old girl were recovered and they were searching for more bodies. In Hyderabad, relatives gathered at the residence of Zishan's brother. Flash floods caused by abnormally heavy monsoon rains have killed at least 549 people in Pakistan over the past month, with remote communities in the impoverished Balochistan province and parts of Sindh among the hardest hit. More on news from Pakistan. Residents in Pakistan have expressed anger over the recent hike in electricity tariff by nearly rupees 11 per unit that has shaken their budgets amid soaring inflation. They said they are fed up over frequent prices hike, while the problem of load shedding has still not been resolved. Residents in Pakistan's financial capital Karachi have expressed dismay over the recent hike in electricity tariff 
by rupees 11.1 per unit on account of fuel cost adjustment for the consumers of K Electric, the investor owned utility which supplies electricity in the city. Local raised concern the soaring inflation has already shaken their domestic budgets. They said they are fed up due to electricity tariff being raised several times over, while problem of load shedding has still not been resolved, which continues to disrupt daily activities. I want to say that every time there is a bill, light comes and bill comes. There is no solution. We will give a poor man a bill. Tell me about it. Ask this for it. Ask it for it. The people are very upset. There is a lot of money in the economy. There is a lot of money in the economy. There is a lot of money in the economy. Meanwhile, Pakistan on Thursday lifted an import ban on luxury goods to meet IMF conditions to revive a bailout package, but such items will be heavily taxed, Finance Minister Mifta Ismail said. The government earlier this week also jacked up petrol prices by up to Rs 6.72 per litre ahead of IMF's board meeting this month that is expected to approve a much-needed tranche of 1.17 billion US dollars. At a high-level gathering of Islamic clerics, civil society activists and Taliban officials in Kandahar, the supreme leader of the Islamic Emirate, Hibatullah Akhundzada, said that he is ready to engage with the international community within a Sharia framework. The Supreme Leader of the Islamic Emirate, Maulvi Habitullah Khundazada, on Thursday said that he is ready to engage with the international community within a Sharia framework, but he will let anyone interfere with the current government. Sharia is a body of religious law that forms part of the Islamic tradition. Akhon Zada made the remark at a high-level gathering of around 2,500 participants, including Islamic clerics, civil society activists, Islamic Emirate officials and officials of the former Afghan government on Thursday in southern Kandahar city. There was no media coverage during the speech of Akhundzada, reports suggest. Afghanistan's acting foreign minister, Amir Khan Mutaki, said that the Islamic Emirate has represented Afghanistan in a better way around the world. He emphasized that Islamic Emirate wants good relations with all countries, but relations after 20 years of war with some countries cannot be expected to be normalized quickly. This gathering comes as Taliban marks a year in power since taking over Afghanistan last August that has given the country security but little hope. Afghan economy is in a free fall due to the impact of the wide-ranging sanctions imposed by the United States after its troop withdrawal one year ago. The country is physically safer than it was when the hardline Islamist movement was fighting against US-led foreign forces and their Afghan allies, although a local offshoot of Islamic State has carried out several attacks. On Wednesday, an explosion hit a mosque in the northern Kharkana area of Kabul during evening prayers, killing at least 21 people and wounding over 30. There's no immediate claim of responsibility and authorities haven't publicly assigned blame. Hindu devotees across India and Nepal on Friday thronged temples to celebrate the festival of Janmashtami, which marks the birth of Hindu Lord Krishna. They performed prayers, sang devotional songs, and some of them also observed fast to mark the occasion. Scores of devotees flocked temples to mark the auspicious festival of Janmashtami, the birth anniversary of Hindu god of protection, Lord Krishna, in India's northern Mathura city, considered to be his birthplace. On the occasion, priests at Sri Krishna Garb Gre performed several rituals including the holy ritual of lights, Aarti of Lord Krishna and his consort Radha. Lord Krishna was born during midnight on the eighth day of the dark moon of August. According to Hindu belief, he took birth to kill his maternal uncle Kans, the demon king of Mathura city. Dahi Handi or human pyramid competitions were also organized in Mumbai city to mark the occasion. It is believed that Lord Krishna formed pyramids with friends to break pots of butter or curd hung from ceilings. In capital New Delhi, devotees immersed in the festive spirit at the Iskon Temple as they offered prayers and danced on devotional hymns. Krishna 
Meanwhile, Janmashtami festival was also celebrated with pomp in neighboring Nepal. Devotees thronged temples to offer prayers at the Patan Darbar Square in capital Kathmandu. Some children and infants dressed as Lord Krishna were the center of attraction for revelers and devotees thronging the temple. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.